Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to A Girl in Love with Tech podcast. My name is Rachel Rappel. I'm a Microsoft Learning Student Ambassador, a Power Platform Developer, and a Dynamics 365 CRM Developer. This podcast is streamed live on Twitter, LinkedIn, and also my YouTube channel. And after this podcast, you can get the recorded episode on Twitter, LinkedIn, my YouTube channel, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, and also Google Podcasts. So our special guest for today is Ilya. Hi. Hello. Hey, Rachel. Yeah. Hi. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And today we are going to be discussing about the importance of users' experience in Power Platform. So hi, Ilya, if you can introduce yourself. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, my name is Ilya Feinberg. I'm a um, senior program manager at Microsoft. I'm part of a team at Microsoft, which is called Fast Track. It is uh, a part of the business applications uh, product group at Microsoft. So essentially kind of we do the uh, R&D part uh, of um, business application development. Uh, so kind of we are working with, with uh, customers and partners. We're trying to see how they work and how they implement our products. We try to advise them on how to best implement our products, you know, dynamics, power platform, and so on. And okay. also we're trying to understand kind of how the market works and how we can uh, better improve our products going forward. So kind of my, my job is basically, you know, making sure that engineering knows what we need, what, what customers want and what, what partners want to do. Yeah. And uh, making sure that uh, customers and partners know what to expect and when is, is, is it coming in terms of the roadmap. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think today we are going to be talking about users' experience in Power Platform, which is not really, it's not really acknowledged because a lot of people they think about their the step by step process on how to build their application, how to build their solution, but they do not really think about okay, this solution I'm building right now, this application I'm building right now, is it okay for my users to use? Will they be able to interact with this application easily? So I think there's one question I want to ask you first is, especially for our listeners, maybe this is your first time they're hearing about Power Platform, or this is your first time they are listening to this podcast. So on your own perspective, what is Microsoft Power Platform? Well, uh, that is a big question. <laughs> so Power Platform is uh, kind of, a collection of products and services that are that exist in the cloud, which allow you to build uh, applications using either low code or no code. Low code and no code is a concept where you build applications essentially with, uh, I would say, the same level of knowledge that you need to build an Excel spreadsheet, right? So I mean, most of what you do in Excel is point and click, but sometimes you write some functions. Yeah. So Power Platform is kind of like that. And in Power Platform, you have uh, several, I would say, key. Uh, products which allow you to build different kinds of applications. So, for example, uh, Power Automate is uh, well one of my one of my favorites, and uh, I'm also <laughs> I'm also currently the uh, lead for Power Power Automate um, R and D at, at Fast Track. Awesome. And yeah. this is uh, kind of a platform which allows you to basically not build applications that users uh, use per se, but applications that connect multiple applications with each other. So essentially, it allows you to create, to create integrations, uh, create batch processes, create approval processes. So all the backend logic that you would do in a traditional application that you would normally write with code, and you would need like you know special, very smart people to do, yeah. uh, with Power Automate, essentially, you can do that with point and click. And we have literally now over a 1,000 built-in connectors, which allow you to connect pretty much any application to any applications, like SAP to Salesforce, like, uh, I don't know, words to Dynamics, like uh, whatever to whatever, like Adobe to some other application that I never heard about. There's literally <laughs> over a thousand different connectors and more and more being added uh, every day uh, by the community, by Microsoft, by partners and so on. So, I mean, I literally saw a connector, a connector for Power Automate, which allows you to get uh, quotes from from, Sakura, from from Star Wars, you know, or, or from Lord of the Rings. I don't know, yeah. kind of, what's the business application for that? But but you know, you, you can do that. Yeah. Um, another thing that we have uh, also very important in the context of, of UX here is Power Apps. So yeah. Power Apps essentially is the uh, thing that allows you to create 
um, the front end, so kind of the, 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 yeah. the part of the application that is actually being used by users, by end users, right? Mm -hmm. So the, it can be mobile, mobile applications for the tablet or for, uh, for the desktop or uh, for phones or even big applications for TVs, like whatever it is, any screen size can work. And uh, you can use that to essentially visualize the data that you want to visualize from different systems. So okay. using Power Automate and using the connectors that, that, we, that we have for Power Platform, you can collect a lot of data into one single location, to one single app that you will build in Power Apps. So for example, you can have uh, an app in Power Apps which will display data from Salesforce and from Dynamics and from SAP Amazing, all in yeah. one screen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it will allow you to create essentially with point and click without writing a single line of code, yeah. uh, an app that, that converges all the data that you have in one place uh, for the user to manipulate, to you know, edit, to view, to create, whatever they need to do. There's li literally, I don't know, it's very difficult to define the limits <laughs> of, of uh, perhaps in that, that regard. Like we have, for example, uh, wonderful people from the community who build even 3D games on Power Apps, uh, which is amazing, honestly. Yeah. But of course, mostly it's been, yeah, uh, but, but mostly, of course, it's been done to, to build enterprise applications uh, for, for end users and for different like specific needs that, that, that people have. I would say that, that you know, um, if we think about it, um, like 10, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, if you were asked the office, the regular office worker, I mean, what would be their tool of choice to uh, implement some kind of a specialized task that they have for the role or for the department, yeah. like 99% of, of, of the time, they will just, just say Excel, right? I have Excel, so I will build that. Maybe if they're like super advanced, they will build that on, on Access, yeah. but mostly on, on Excel and they will build something and you know, 10 years later, you'll have this huge Excel file, which which automates half of the business, yeah. <laughs> which is not, not a great situation, but it happens all the time. And now essentially Power Platform, like Power Automate and Power Apps and other uh, applications that we have in, in the Power Platform is actually kind of replaced that whole uh, idea of you having just Excel to do all your stuff. Yeah, With true. the same skill set, you can build entire apps that do basically whatever you want, like real applications that run on multiple yeah. platforms. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Power platform is always amazing. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I think another thing we also need to understand on this call, maybe a few persons, maybe they're hearing about user's experience and they do not understand what it means. So what is user's experience? Yeah, so um, I think there's a lot of confusion there in terms of the, the terms, the terminology that has been used and what it actually means. Yeah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of like words that people sometimes use like UX and UI and you know, yeah. it seems that people use those interchangeably, which is not, not really the case. But um, so user experience in a nutshell is uh, basically uh, what is your relationship between the application that you're using and yourself? How is this, how is this relationship, relationship is actually being managed, right? It's about essentially creating some kind of a human connection between uh, the app that you build and the end users that's going to use the, 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 those, those apps. The question is how you build that connection in such a way that it is, it is understandable, it is maybe even pleasant, it is desirable. So how do you do it? And there's several ways to do it. There's of course the, the aesthetic side, so you can you know, have nice colors, nice fonts, and nice pictures, and the text size will be uh, you know, exactly the right size, and the buttons will be exactly the right size, and it all be, will be nice and beautiful. Okay. But that part does not really say that the app is going to be uh, easy to use, right? It's, it, it, I mean, a beautiful app doesn't mean that it's easy to use. Yeah. An ugly <laughs> app, that doesn't mean that, that it's hard to use, right? Yeah. So that's, that, that's the difference. Like UI uh, is the part of the development process where we decide, decide on the colors, on the graphics, on the fonts, on all the visual stuff. But yeah. the UX is essentially when we're trying to answer the question, so how easy is it to find what I'm trying to find in the app? Okay. How long does it take me to get there? What okay. is my experience in navigating across the, across the app? Yeah, so true. those are the questions that have been answered by user experience. And yeah. to make that a great experience, the app doesn't have to be beautiful. You don't have to invest um, uh, you know, time to build, uh, to design something amazing in Photoshop. Yeah. You can, of course, if you want to, if you want to go the extra mile for that. But uh, at some point, I would say that even there's a point where um, too much graphics, too much design, too much things make the screen maybe overcrowded and make the actual user experience worse than, than yeah. it could be. 
Yeah, yeah. So UX is about finding that balance between you know, the graphics and all the tools that you have to build uh, the app in such a way that it makes a connection with the user in such a way that they want to use the app. Yeah. Because the most terrible thing that can happen is that you invest a lot of time, like you can invest in, I don't know, a week, a month in building some kind of an app, okay. which does amazing things for the user and at the end, you know, has an amazing value for the company and you yeah. deploy that and no one wants to use the app. Why? Because it doesn't, it feels weird, right? It feels weird, no one wants to do it, it feels, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's, it's not intuitive, it's not great to use, it's not, uh, you know, it takes like a huge amount of time to train people to use it, and people yeah. really don't, don't see the value, right? Sure. And yeah. there, there's, there's quite a few examples, even famous examples in the world where, you know, uh, it became very difficult to adopt something uh, just because it has a bad UX. Okay. Like, I think uh, if you, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you ever try to use the Linux operating system, and, and I have, I've been a Linux user for the past almost 20 years, okay. uh, the reason why it never be, you know, became very popular is, based, in my opinion at least, is basically UX, right? <laughs> it's, it's, a great, it's, ni it's a nice operating system, but in terms of UX, it's, uh, yeah, it's still not, not there, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, yeah there's, there's so many, many examples of um, like, um, things that, you know, can have so much capability, but no one is using just because it's not doesn't have the best UX in the world. Yeah. Um, so that what UX is is about the, making that connection, and if you don't make that that connection, then it doesn't really matter what kind of app you wrote and how much time you invest in that. Yeah. If it doesn't make that connection, it might as well does not exist. Yeah, I think that's a, that's what a lot of people do. Like they miss out on actually planning for how they want their application to look like. Because I think that there's one thing to actually, when building an application, you have to think about this is that this application, this, a user does not have to have a manual to be able to know how the navigation of this application works. It has to be simple to use. It's very, very important. When the, there, there are a lot of plans that come into building an application or building a solution. You have to write documentation, you have to do so much, but there, there's something they miss out there which is very, very important, and that is user experience. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. I kind of started my career as, as a developer, but also it's also kind of in parallel, I was also very much interested in, in, in graphic design and in UX. And actually, I studied in university um, design for quite a few years. And after that, I taught graphic design for three years in university. Yeah. Yeah. And that was always something that I even though I was kind of in parallel also a developer, always <laughs> something that, that I considered to be on the forefront. So when I thought about building an app, even you know in the old days when, when I used to use code to do that, yeah, okay. the first thing, I mean, I would think about the general idea of what the app should do, but the first thing I would start doing would be the UX, not the actual backend, not the actual <laughs> processes. This is okay. kind of, for me, it was, even as a developer, difficult to think about the app without seeing that yeah visually and that being, without being able to interact with, with, with the app. Because I knew that no matter what I build in the back end, it can be maybe not the best quality in the first version. Maybe I'll have, have to do some changes in, in the end. But when I do those, change, those changes, they will not impact my actual end users. I mean, they will impact in some way, maybe not, not in a big way. But yeah. if I'm going to change one button in, you know, to a different color or to a different location, that will you know, drive the complaints. That will drive the actual feedback from users. And we can see that, for example, in the real world, like. Um, uh, when we, Windows Vista came out, uh, Microsoft changed the uh, driver architecture, right? So, you know, people complained and, you know, you have to get new drivers for all your devices and uh, vendors had to rewrite all the drivers. And it was kind of a bit of a conversation that died out quite quite quickly. But yeah. when in Windows, Windows 8, Microsoft removed the start button, you know, that, that button <laughs> that was there for, for, you know, 30 years, then it was like a worldwide sensation, <laughs> you know. People, I think, still talk, talk about it, and yeah. you know, actually, the Microsoft had to how to get it back at Windows uh, eight point one just because of that backlash. Yeah. So, I mean, the power of UX, in some extent, is so big that it's very difficult yeah. to understate. Yeah, I think there's also one thing you just pointed out is a good thing to actually listen to your users, to your customers, what they want is actually very important. And while we are users' experience, so what do you think about users' experience in Power Platform? So um, I actually have this this kind of a um, kind of session or, or or like a presentation that I, I do on the topic and, and I, did, I presented that that in a few different events. Uh, and one of the things I talk about there 
one of the first things that you are presented with when you start a power app is actually you're asked what kind of screen do you want? Do you want like a mobile app or a tablet app or you know what kind of uh, orientation do you want? And people generally like at that point they haven't even thought about it, right? I mean they were just like <laughs> they thought about what the app would do, but they never yeah. even started thinking about how it should look like or for what device it should work on or all, all those details. And they will just click on something thinking that you know what I will change that later on. And yes, you can change that later on. Yeah. But the thing is that. When um, this is something that I, I learned from kind of my uh, years at uh, at the university when I studied design, one of the those uh, one of the kind of uh, uh, courses I took was uh, actual uh, painting, like you know, with a paintbrush uh, on a canvas, That's cool. and and kind of you as an artist uh, and as a designer, as as anyone, when you look at a big white canvas or at a small white canvas, yeah. somehow we are. Uh, thinking entirely differently, uh, differently about it. We have this kind of thing in our mind that we want to fill in white spaces as much as possible. We want to kind of use all the space that we can, we can like mentally, mm -hmm. when we use that. And if I have a large canvas, canvas this, this means that I will instinctively will try to draw something on large canvas. And if I have a small canvas, I will instinctively try to draw something or to adapt it to a smaller canvas. And yeah. if, I made, if I kind of uh, already made an app for a large canvas, yeah. and then I was told, oh, no, actually, we want this app to run on mobile devices, like on small, like, you know, yeah. phones. And yeah. you're trying to condense all that experience into a small screen, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah it's going to be difficult. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's entirely kind of, even if you compress the visual elements to from big to small, yeah. the user experience will just not be there. Uh, for, if you even look at, like, good examples of like tablet apps or and, uh, phone apps, yeah. you will see that they are entirely different. So a good uh, tablet app is not just a phone app that, that was stretched you know, for a larger size. Yeah. It is one that is using all the screen real estate to add functionality, add features to the screen, to make it more engaging, to make it more like natural in that screen size that, that people are holding in terms of a tablet. And yeah. in the phone, you have a different situation. You have, you know, you hold it in one hand, you want one hand, one handed operation, or if you want two handed operation, you need to, you know, understand that people are going to use their thumbs to use, to use it. So it's an entirely different way of using the app and therefore the entire experience should be different. Yeah, different. And, and, and that, that's kind of the thing that I, I would say that kind of the first thing to think about when you start, a, a, um, before you start building an app in Power Platform, yeah. is that you need to do some prototyping. You need to really sit down, and before you actually click on the new button and open the, this new app, mm -hmm. you need to sit yeah. down, you need to prototype that. Like, and by the way, prototyping doesn't have to be like something complicated in like some, uh, I don't know, super like app like Adobe XD or like uh, some, some professional you know prototyping app. Just yeah. take I don't know a piece of paper, take a pencil. I was gonna say that, yeah, too. That's that's so yeah. simple. Anyone can do it. Sit down with yeah. with you know your, your business user, your customer, just you know agree on what should should be like, what should look look like, and yeah. then when you have that rough sketch, actually today if you have the, the, that that rough sketch, you can even take a photo of that yeah. and import yeah. that into, into Power Apps and convert yeah. that into a starter app. So that's already something that, that we have using AI. But you know, even without that, it is something that you. I would always say that it's the first thing to do. And the first thing is not to, to create the new app and then think about what you're going to do. The first thing is sit down, uh, draw it, decide what it's going to look like, what's going the navigation is going to look like, where the button is going to be located, yeah. uh, you know, how it's going to work for business users. Okay. Sign, sign with that with them. You know that you know this is what what we want. Yeah. And then you click on the new button and then you create that and then you implement all that business logic behind it. Yeah, true. I, I think there's also something you just said now that I, I've noticed a lot that happens. They, when people are building an application, maybe a Power Apps application or maybe other codes, they don't think mm -hmm. about, okay, this application, how is it going to look like in other screens? They're just thinking about their own yeah. screen. The way they're yeah. building it, that's the way they're envisioning it. They're not thinking about, okay, maybe this person, this user that is going to be using this particular application is going to be using a smaller phone, person is going to be using an iPad, person is going to be using a flip a flip flop phone. They don't think so much about all of that. They just think that, okay, I just want to build an application. I just want to solve a problem. They don't think about the, the responsivity of that particular application in different screens. And yeah. I think there's one mistake that people make a lot when they hear about user's experience. They think that, okay, I have to be 
a professional. I have to know so much in order mm -hmm. to in order to bring user's experience into my application or into my solution. What do you think about that? Well, um, it's, it's, it's the thing that I always mention in my session is that uh, the presentation that, that I'm doing on UX, it's, it's, it's usually like one or two hours, depending on the session. Yes. And the first thing I'm saying, it's not meant to make you professionals, right? There's no expectation from that. In fact, uh, Power Platform was built for citizen developers. Really, there's no expectation for you to be professional developers. If you want to hire one, that, that's fine. Yes. But really, it's not that difficult to do something that is at least good enough. And I think the first mistake that the people do when trying to design their, their app is that they're trying to reinvent the, the wheel. They're you know, sitting down with, with a blank paper and they're like, okay, I'm going to do, to do this and that and all that stuff. And then it looks like something, like I'm sometimes look, looking at those apps, which you know, some customers show me, which they have designed from scratch. Yeah. And I'm asking them, so do you have a phone? And I assume that you do, right? And I assume that you have apps on that phone that you use every day. Do you know of any app that looks anything like that? Okay. No, you don't, because no one designs apps like, like, like that. <laughs> yeah. That's kind, of, that's kind of your first clue, right? Yeah. So don't, I mean, no one expects, even I would say, I would say even uh, more than that, even professionals don't start, don't start, don't start from a blank page. <laughs> the biggest professionals, they go uh, to the app store, they look at a nice app that, that looks similar to what one, they want to do, yeah. they get inspiration, yeah, yeah. And they just do that. So yeah. do that. That's the easiest thing in, in the world. Like find an app that does what you want and yeah. basically, uh, you know, copy the elements from that app, uh, you know, kind of leverage the experience and the, and, and the experience that other people have already implemented with, with their apps yeah. and build something that is familiar to users using the same language that is being used in different apps. So like we are, yeah. we have, many elements today, like in, in, in websites and mobile apps, which are something that people already expect. Like, for example, you know, the, 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 the hamburger menu, right? Like yeah. everyone knows what the hamburger menu is or the, the save yeah. button, you know, or the, or the close yeah. button. Everyone knows how those looks like, no matter yeah. what website it is, it's, it's all similar. So yeah. use those kind of elements, use, use familiar elements, use familiar layouts. I know it's, it might sound like it is, you know, boring and I want to do something creative and blah, blah, blah. You okay. can do something creative if you, if, you, if you want to, but you are here to design an app which people will want to use. Yeah. And an app which people will want to use and will understand is something that, that is maybe a little bit boring because it is familiar, because it is uh, in some ways similar across the board. You know, like you would see even different, maybe many websites from different vendors which look the same. Yeah. They're not doing that because they don't have the money to hire a UX designer. They, they can. They do it sure. because they want it to be easier for people to understand their, their product and their services. And so should you. Like if, yeah. I don't know, if, I don't know, if, if, if uh, Apple uh, invests like a $2 billion in, into UI and they do something that is Different. recognizable to a Windows user, yeah. right? Then they don't, they don't do it because they don't have the money. They yeah. do it because it is recognizable, <laughs> right? Yes. And so should you. Especially if you don't have $2 billion for your, for your, your design, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think there's also one thing you just pointed out. I'm learning so much from this podcast. I think there's something you pointed out. A lot of users, maybe you have a button on the screen, and the user is expecting that, okay, when I click on this button, something is going to happen. Like, when I click on this button, and they are clicking on the button, clicking on it, nothing is happening. That is not meeting the user's expectation. Or maybe you, you built an application, and when you are building it on your screen, maybe on your laptop, your desktop, you did not think about, okay, maybe this person is not using buttons to control their screen. Maybe this person is using this. Maybe this person is just tapping their screen to control the movement of the screen. And you mm -hmm. did not think of that. So there, there's so much involved that when building an application, you have to think about. And there's also one thing I want to point out, point out to, and that is accessibility. Yeah. Accessibility is very, very important. You have to think about the colors. You have to think about so many things. So what do you say about accessibility in building an application? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I would say that um, some needs in terms of accessibility, if you really look at kind of all the kinds of accessibility needs that exist in the world, yeah. there's actually quite a large percentage of people that uh, would need that. Like, um, 
even if you look at uh, different levels of vision, different level of co color blindness, so, you know, you know, if someone is colorblind, doesn't mean that they are, don't see any colors. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are partially colorblind, they don't see particular colors, so they don't distinguish between, between different colors. Like, yeah. for example, I myself have this thing that I uh, don't very well see depth. So, for example, if I go to a 3D movie, I don't see the 3D yeah. effect at all, almost yeah. at all, at least. And uh, you know, other people have. Other such, such, such limitations. So, uh, first of all, when you build an app, it is of course something that you need to think about. Okay. You need to know what what is, I would say, beyond knowing your target audience uh, yeah. that that may have special needs and special requirements. You should okay. also always have some basic accessibility um, features in your app, which yeah. is not that difficult to implement, quite frankly. Um, like there are tools which allow you to select uh, a color palette which will be yeah. accessible. Yeah. Tools yeah. which allow you to select to yeah. check for fonts. Yeah. Yeah. There's even, um, for example, um, if you open your your Power App in a browser, you have okay. a tool built built in. Uh, if you open the if you in Edge, if you click like uh, Control Shift I and you open the Developer Tools, yeah. you have there's something called Lighthouse Report. So okay. the Lighthouse, Lighthouse Report essentially is a tool which automatically scans any app, any web app, including yeah. Power Apps. Yeah. Uh, and, and allows you to scan it for performance, accessibility, and other features. So you can literally say, say you know, scan for accessibility, and it will tell you if the, you know, what's the percentage of your compliance with different accessibility standards, like like the uh, WCAG uh, 2.1, which is like yeah. a web standard for accessibility. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to apply the fixes that, that 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 are required. So it will literally point you point out to you like you know where the problem are and how to fix them. Yeah. So it's like it's it never was simpler to build an accessibility app. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's also one thing too I understand from accessibility. Most times it's not about just building for people's needs. Like mo maybe sometimes I'm working, I'm working, and there's a lot of sun outside. Most times I can't see my screen, so I have to, I have to change the, I have to change my screen, like change, mm -hmm. the, reduce the volume, stuff like that. So most things needs to be considered when building an application, and also fonts. Fonts color, you cannot try and use like a let me say a blue background and trying to use a blue color of fonts on that blue background. That is going to be that's going to be really really hard to see what is happening on the screen. Yeah, so, yeah, that's so true. Stuff, yeah, stuff like yeah. that. You, you, should, you should be kind of aware also of kind of the uh, the condition the conditions as I mentioned in which the app is going to be used. Like obviously, outdoor use is different from indoor use. Uh, on the go is different from stationary. Like uh, for example, um, one of the examples I'm giving in in, in my session is um, uh, kind of four versions of the same app, which looks entirely different. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, explaining that every one of those modifications of of the of the of, this, of the app can be legitimate based on the user conditions of the app. So for example, uh, there are some apps that you have on your phone which may have a car mode. So the car mode will, will assume that you hold the app uh, um, kind of on, on, on a stand in, in your car, right? Mm -hmm. And it will increase the elements in size in such a way that when you're driving, yeah. You don't want to ha would, wouldn't have to look on your phone, right? And because yeah. you know it's obviously it's a bit dangerous. You'll have big elements so you can you can see them from afar uh, while while you be up behind the wheel. Big buttons that, that you, you you can click if you need to to do something. So you'd yeah. have like entirely different UI specifically for car use. Uh, okay. But again, as I mentioned, for outdoor use as well. Outdoor use, you need to have like very high contrast, even if it doesn't look very beautiful, but it needs to be yeah. visible in sunlight. Uh, if it's like office work, it can be like more condensed. So it can have like more features on the screen. If someone is just sitting down and using the AD app, so that's fine. Okay. But it's something that is, is on the go. You will need it to be kind of more like between office use and, and car use, like something okay. medium size that can be used in, in one hand. Like today's okay. phones are quite big. So yeah. you want to make sure that you can use, you can hold it in one hand and reach with your, with your thumb but while you're on the go. Because yeah. obviously again, you know, using all, you, you know, both of your hands on the go is not very convenient. Yeah, sure. yeah, it's it's all considerations that, that you need to take, and it's kind of also one of the reasons, you know, going back to prototyping, why you should do prototyping long before you click on the create new project button, and long before you decide on the kind of screen that, that, that you're going to have. Yeah, that's amazing. I think there's also one question I would love to ask you is that, what is the difference between, as we're talking about user experience, what is the difference between UI and UX? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's 
basically we, we touched, touched upon upon that, upon that, that a bit um, uh, in the beginning, but uh, UI essentially is the um, all the graphical element that you have in, in your app. So all the icons, all the colors that, that, that you're going to use, all the graphics that you're going to use, gradients, whatever it is. That essentially all the visual parts are the UI, right? How it's, it's, it's the answer to the question of how does it look like, okay? okay. The UX is the answer to the question of how do you use the app? How do you interact with the app? How do you get to different places? How do you find different functionalities? How do you interact with those functionalities? Okay. And that interaction part can, uh, of course, be enhanced with, graf with, with graphics, with the UI part, yeah. but it does not necessarily depend on that. So you can have very, very simple graphics, very, very simple UI, okay. uh, but very intuitive UX with that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there's, a, there's a few examples of apps um, that can have very complicated UI, UI, like, you know, a lot of shadows, a lot of gradients, a lot of yeah. beautiful elements, yeah. but that <laughs> makes the UX actually worse, right? Yeah. So, I mean, not in all cases, but it can, right? I mean, it, it requires, uh, I would say, more um, kind of experience to make both a beautiful UI with a lot of elements and a usable UX. So, like, it really is very, very hard, and that, that's why, most companies you see that today they just don't do that like you you will see that in the past 10 years we went yeah. very much into minimalism with um ux across uh, apps across operating systems like you see that uh in uh, apple devices in uh, Microsoft devices even in google devices it's all like become became very minimalist okay simply because it's like much easier to use much easier to, to understand much easier to design yeah. th th that way yeah. Um, and that's basically how most people, I think, should also implement their UX as well. Okay, that's amazing. I think another question I have to ask, like, I, we don't have any questions on the chat, but there's one question that I have to ask you is that people who are interested in coming to learning about user experience, implementing it in Power Platform, where do mm -hmm. you think they can start? Where do you think they can start learning? Well, that's... Um, both a difficult question and a simple question. So uh, in, in the context of Power Platform specifically, there are uh, quite a few articles that answer that question both from uh, the community. So there's a lot of community articles from that um, and community people who are specifically uh, would say specialized on UX and Power Platform, which uh, have a lot of examples, a lot of uh, different um, articles and such uh, and libraries that, that can help you a lot of starter kits that can help you yeah. uh, there's also a starter kit from microsoft which uh the, the creative kit uh, for Power platform which allows you to uh do kind of implement a lot, a lot of elements as well uh yeah. without building that, that, that yourself there's a lot of a lot of articles from microsoft that we should, we should talk about it but also if you look beyond that because yeah. i mean a uh, Power platform is um of course has its own specificity when it comes to UX, okay. but also UX is much bigger than Power Platform itself. So okay. if you just, you know, uh, open your favorite search engine and you search for like uh, basics for UX design for mobile okay. apps, yeah. you will find a million resources, like so much more than I can possibly talk about, sure. uh, all of which will be applicable to Power Platform as well. Okay. Uh, the thing I, the things I would, uh, the main topics I would uh, maybe, um, think about when I build an app is kind of, um, first of all, uh, when, talk, when talk, I talk about the UX thing, about yeah. uh, app navigation, right? So you, you can open, open uh, there's many articles about, about app navigation, both for apps and for web, websites, all of them are good, and all of them will teach you something that you can use in Pop Platform. Uh, yeah. Color schemes and, and fonts, yeah. also there's a lot of articles specifically about that, which will teach you a yeah. lot and will give you all the tools that, that you need to uh, find the right fonts and find the right color schemes automatically yeah. using you know established industry tools uh, which are free uh, that you can use in your apps as well uh, things like branding as well like branding is um something that can be very important for many, many organizations and something that is sure. can be very right. difficult to implement in a tasteful, tasteful way so that can yeah. be also something that you should learn about uh layout design very very important as i mentioned yeah. we use apps on in many different screen types and screen sizes yeah. and the, and there's always i would say an internal eternal question between should i make uh three different apps for desktop mobile and tablet or should i make one app which is a kind of a responsive app which works yeah. on all devices at once what is yeah. the right answer the recent yeah. one yeah. there isn't there is no or no right answer and there's no <laughs> 
uh, and even yeah. uh, even among like two professionals with PhDs in graphic design, they will fight to the death to answer the, the, the same question in different in different ways. Yeah. And you will see that even across large vendors. I mean, again, let's take for example Apple and Google. Uh, if you look at how um, apps are implemented on Android and on iOS, it is very different. Like Google encourages you to build one app which works on tablets and phones. Okay. Apple encourages you to do the opposite. It actually, yeah. in the beginning, it wouldn't even let you to build the same app for iPhones and, and, and iPads. You would, okay. you, you, you would have to build separate apps. Yeah. Now it allows you to do it, but, but it allows you to make uh, kind of the same business logic, but it okay. forces you to make, to make separate UIs. Okay. And, and you see that, that yeah. those two large vendors have the entirely different answers to that, that kind of questions. Yeah. I get you now. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I was not aware. <laughs> <laughs> That's really amazing. I, I think we do not have any questions on the chat. Mm -hmm. And I want to point it out. Everyone in Microsoft Power Platform space, or maybe uh, you're just transitioning or you're starting your journey in Power Platform, you can attend the Nordic Summit and also Microsoft Power Platform Conference and South Coast Summit. Yeah, it's amazing. So, yeah, I'm actually going to be at the Nordic Summit. So, you know, if you want to meet me there, so. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to ask if you have any advice to give to our listeners concerning what we just spoke about, concerning users' experience in Power Platform. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one thing I would say about Power Platform. Uh, I mentioned that I started my career as a developer and I started, started developing when I was like the first commercial application that I built, which I actually you know, was paid for, I was 15, 15 years old. So I've been a developer for wow, a very, a very long time. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you that I did not get into development uh, because I like coding. You know, I'm not a coder, I'm a developer. And the difference is that I want to build stuff, not to code stuff. I mean, I mean, coding for me is a tool to build stuff. Yeah. And now that we have things like Power Platform, I literally yeah. uh, cannot find a reason anymore to open Visual Studio to write code, even if, you, if I want to, like for, you know, for, for, for personal entertainment. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, you know what, I, isn't it just easier to do it like in Power Platform, like seriously? And like, <laughs> it, is, it is an amazing thing to see that, that today uh, at Microsoft, we have partners whose entire business is building Power Apps uh, and Power Platform applications. Yeah, like their entire business is low code and no code at all. They have no coders, no developers, no nothing. They yeah. build platform applications only. Yeah. And as we go forward, we'll see that happening more and more. So yeah. I would say that kind of my advice is that if you are still not into that whole thing of platform yeah. and AI, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, hop on board. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's a big opportunity to actually start your journey and it's amazing. Power Platform is amazing. So yeah. Yeah. if you are not here, you are missing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. So thank you so much, Ilya. And I also want to make an announcement that if you are a student and you are interested to talk about your project with Microsoft Azure, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, Rachel Rabo. And you can also reach out to me on Twitter, Richie for Love. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So. Bye, everyone, and see Bye, you in the next you. podcast. Yeah, I think we have a question. Could we use, could we oh. say that ensuring a good user experience is seminous with having a well designed UI? Um, so, no, not really. So, as I mentioned, UX and UI are different things. Uh, and you can have very simple, like, um, I, I probably cannot show it right, right now, but uh, you probably also in your life would have examples of very, very simple UIs. Like think about, for example, I don't know, your social media apps, like okay. your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram. If you think about, if you look, open the app right now on your phone and you look at the actual UI of the app, of the, of the uh, graphical elements that belong to the app itself, yeah. you will see that it's very minimalist, like basically almost nothing. It is okay. designed for the app to disappear in the background and for yeah. the content to be king, okay? Yeah. And that's kind of the mark of a good UX. So UX exposes what the user is looking for, the functionality or the content or whatever it is, without being in the way. Okay. 
as a designer, as a developer, you're not there to demonstrate your skills in drawing amazing, amazing looking buttons. <laughs> yeah. You're there to, you know, uh, basically expose some kind of functionality okay. or some kind of content in the most efficient way possible. And yeah. for that, the UI itself, the visuals themselves can be extremely simple, extremely minimalist. And, okay. and in many cases, that's the best way to go. Yeah, that's amazing. So I think, Ali, that's a very perfect answer to your question. And thank you so much, Ilya. I think somebody made a post. Let me just help her post it. She said, if you're interested in designing accessible apps, the Government Digital Service UK GDS has some excellent resources. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And thank you, thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this podcast. And don't forget to subscribe and follow everywhere. <laughs> 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 and bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.